Honourable Member in Microsoft Central. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to lend just a few words to this debate, especially based on the last two, well, not the last two, should I say the last two substantive contributions, the members on this side, um, but in particular, the member who led the, who piloted the bill, in, in so much as he said in his presentation, if anyone is listening, and then he made some recommendations for the work that needs to be done. Um, I, I hope that he knows that the, the, the member who has responsibility for technology and innovation is definitely listening. I, I, I dare say that is why I'm here. Uh, but I also want to build on the platform that was built uh, so capably by the member who just spoke with respect to the future of these kinds of transactions. And the member uh, made an invocation to us to think ahead, to understand what is needed now. Uh, really what is needed now is not so far in the future, it is here. And the fact is that right now, Barbados, like most jurisdictions of our kind, we've become quite good, quite expert in producing and validating the authenticity of documents um, in a physical environment. And so embossing of letters, printing of certificates on the, the most delicate of parchment paper, security laminates on cards, stamps, wet signatures from authorized personnel. Um, these are the kinds of things that we've used to give administrators the means to determine the authenticity of documents. The challenge is that in an online environment, these physical characteristics are lost. So when you scan a document, uh, you cannot perceive or transmit a seal um, or any of the other means of authenticity or, or, or authentication that would apply to a physical paper environment. And so when you have to do that, when you have to scan to send something abroad, uh, when you have to scan something to send it even to your neighbor, to send it to a client of uh, the licensing authority or the transport authority or any service that we provide to the, to the, to the people of Barbados, then the whole capacity for authentication goes away. It brings us then to something that the Ministry of Innovation, Science and Technology is working quite swiftly on and towards along with key partners like the Immigration Department and the Central Bank of Barbados. You know, so, you know, the thing is that this business of moving to an online environment, making services available online for people uh, so that either in, in this jurisdiction or others, they can do business more easily, more quickly, and at a lower cost, it is not just a government matter. And in fact, we saw that with the introduction of the easy pay platform and other payment services, which really where government cannot do it alone. And we have to work with other institutions, in particular financial institutions, um, in order to make this happen. And so similarly, we have the question of what we know as public key infrastructure. Um, and the young people who work with me on these matters refer to it very, um, briefly as PKI. That's, that's what we hear, what I hear in the halls of my ministry um, every day these days, public key infrastructure or PKI capacity. And all it is saying really is that this is the way that we are able to validate digital documents. And PKI, public key infrastructure, is a framework that we use to secure electronic communications and transactions over the internet using a pair of cryptographic keys. One, one key is a public key, and the other key is a private key. Um, now, what we're able to do with this um, is 
to make it so that a digital signature that is affixed to an, a digital document um, can be authenticated. So it provides a secure environment for the signature of electronic documents and messages, and it ensures the integrity and authenticity of the signed content. Now, I don't want to go into all of the um, technical requirements of what this means, but if we, are, if we want to look very closely for an example of that, we, can, we know that the public key infrastructure and the digital signature mechanism are currently used, for example, in the e-passport system. The e-passport system already makes use of that methodology, of that system of authentication. Um, the Trident ID also has that capacity to digitally validate the authenticity of presented identities and of digital signatures in a digital environment. But we have to go further. Uh, we really have to be able to create, and that's what MIST is working towards now, but we can't do it alone. We're doing it along with the other users of this very important um, capability. The current um, legislative framework allows for the legal recognition of electronic signatures through what we know as the Electronic Transactions Act, and that's important. So we'll note that the legislation that comes to this honorable place now always allows for whatever we are validating or presenting where signatures or publication are required, the legislation now also allows for that in a digital environment, which is good. But while the legal recognition of electronic signatures that is enabled through the Electronic Transactions Act is an important step, it isn't enough. We need to have an environment where there is more legal certainty about the mechanisms by which electronic signatures are generated, accepted, and regulated. In other words, you need to know for sure that if you receive an electronic signature from the Immigration Department, that that can be trusted. It cannot be generated anywhere else. It has a singular provenance. It comes from one place. And so the public key infrastructure is what allows us to do that. Now, currently, the existing PKI regime is governed by ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Authority Standards. Um, it is also governed by our Barbados Identity Management Act and by Barbados's Electronic Transactions Act. And, and that is the only way in which we've been able to have the e-passport and the Trident ID card. So what do we have to do now? What we need is to embrace this approach, this methodology, this, this digital authentication process. We need to embrace this all over the country in a whole of country manner. Because it has to be that if we are moving fully to online transactions, that anyone who must receive, so whether it is a financial institution, whether it is the registry, whether it is the state hospital, anyone that, that receives a document from an individual must be able to trust its origin must be able to trust that it could not have been forged because of the dual public key cryptographic approach. So this is technology that must be proven to be infallible. And so we need to make sure that we adopt it in a whole of country manner to allow for its recognition um, and for all of what we call the derived artifacts, any asset that is produced from this technology to allow for it to be used in all sectors of the country at all times in a 24 hour, seven day a week environment. So what we will soon be seeing uh, is a move towards having the appropriate legislative framework in order to build out that system, in order to build out an entire digital trust services regime for Barbados. And, and when I say digital trust services, all I really am talking about 
is the full range of solutions and mechanisms that are designed to ensure the security, privacy, and reliability of digital transactions and interactions. Now, sir, I pause here for a moment to acknowledge that if we want, and when I say we, I mean all of us as Barbadians, as a country, as a society, as an economic jurisdiction, as a place that must be concerned with creating opportunities for all people to thrive, to realize the full range of their choices, to be able to operate in the fullness of whoever they want to be. If we say that we want that, then we also have to create the systems that make it safe to do that in every environment. And so the questions of law and order and the things that protect people are not just applicable when you're walking down Swan Street or when you're in Dover or when you're in any other part of Barbados. Uh, increasingly, questions of security and safety in conducting business are going to apply in an online environment. I say all that to say that whether it is the electronic transactions legislation or the data protection legislation or the cybercrime legislation or our move towards this secure environment for digital signing, these are the ways in which Barbadians are going to be protected so that they can act with certainty when conducting business in this digital environment. Sir, as we move to modernize the way that we do things, and really to join the rest of the world in the way that we do things. Um, because when we're talking about exports, when we're talking about integration into global markets, we cannot integrate into global markets that are digitally led while we operate in an analog environment. You know, when I go to Costa Rica or to Panama or to Ar Argentina, um, I almost said Argentina, because I was about to make the point that I have to speak the language. I have to be able to relate to the environment in which they relate. Similarly, if we are talking about giving people opportunities to earn from right here where, where, there's, where they may sit, then we have to make sure that we also provide the tools for people to function in that online environment. But more than that, even setting aside the need to create online opportunities for young people, and more and more we're talking about uh, issues that relate to allowing people to be able to monetize their online content, and what are the, what are the global conversations we have, to do, we have to have about that? Because we do. We have to make sure that we are talking to the owners of large online marketplaces like Google and Amazon and others to say, look, we also have creators and entrepreneurs in this part of the world who have a right to be able to access these markets. And how are we going to make that happen? And how are we going to liberalize the same rules that they always want the global south to liberalize? How are, we, how are you in the global north how are you in developed countries going to liberalize your financial rules so that we or, or content creators and business people can have access? That is one of the conversations we have to have at the international level. But right here, one of the things we have to do is to get to a stage of maturity in the technological environment where digital trust services, this public key infrastructure that means that we can make sure that digital signatures are real and valid and can be trusted, we have to get to that stage of maturity. We have to do a lot of groundwork. And so we at MIST are about to have some conversations in, in the coming days with colleagues at the Central Bank, with colleagues at the Immigration Department, um, all of the current environments for which this is now critical with a view to determining what should this infrastructure look like, how will we roll it out, so that the member for Christchurch East need not shout into the void 
to wonder if anyone is listening about the question of needing to migrate services such as this to an online environment, but so that he can be assured that this is, in fact, the direction in which we are already moving and the kind of work that will give even more, uh, that will cause this legislation to, that he has introduced to have even more impact, to be even more far reaching, and to then reach another level of modernization for the residents of Barbados and friends of Barbados and people who want to invest and people who see Barbados as a worthwhile jurisdiction in which to do business. So, sir, I rose to give this update uh, through you to the people of Barbados in terms of how are we building trust in the digital environment such that we can expand its capacity and in that way the choices of the people we humbly serve. And with those few words, sir, I'm obliged to you. Thank you.